Jimmy and Michael here at CES 2018. We just checked out the new HTC Vive. Does it make enough improvements to get you into VR? Let's find out. So Michael, we just both tried the HTC Vive Pro, which is the new headset from HTC, and it features a sharper resolution with better optics. I believe it's like 2880 by 1600p, yep. which HTC says is a 78% improvement over the original Vive. Mm -hmm. um, we both had a chance to try it. What did you think about it? I noticed that you know text is going to be sharper on screen and textures are going to be a little bit sharper as well or like at least the edges of objects will look sharper of course because you know the higher resolution foliage off in the distance also looks a lot crisper and they also said that the minimum specs haven't changed despite the increase in resolution like you mentioned uh, <laughs> when we were talking about it, it's like that's kind of hard to believe well the minimum specs yeah sure but by nature of increasing the resolution you're probably going to want better hardware to maintain the frame rates yeah yeah i noticed that like on the original vive um you know it's 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 okay but you have a slight screen dooring effect and you kind of see pixels a little bit mm -hmm. you can still kind of see the pixels here if you're looking for it but it just looks a lot you know more clear so they also changed the, the ergonomics. What do you think about the headset's comfort level? Uh, I found it similar to the deluxe strap that they released last year. It's really easy to put on, especially compared to the original Vive setup that had like a bunch of straps flying all over the place. <laughs> so here it's just like loosen up the dial, mm -hmm. put it on your head, push it down, and then twist the dial, and then the strap on top secures it on your head. So they've figured out how to make this work without people struggling to put this thing on. Yeah, I think in my opinion, it's, it's similar to the deluxe strap. It's uh, like more comfortable, maybe Maybe, maybe on par with PSVR in that it does a better job at like weight distribution between yes. the front and the back. There is a dial on the back which makes it easy to tighten. The headset has a new nozzle so you can like move the headset uh, forward and backwards more easily as well. So the headset also introduced a new integrated audio which is kind of similar to the Deluxe but they're slightly different. What did you think about the audio quality? Uh, I thought they were perfectly fine. They do what they need to do. I was also impressed with the noise isolation because like people at HTC when we we're demoing them were trying to give me instructions and I had them like on tight along my ears and I was like, huh, what? So I couldn't really <laughs> hear what they were what they were trying to say to me, which is a good thing. Right. So right. yeah, you Especially know. Especially for VR where you want to get immersed, you don't want to hear the like birds chirping off in the background when you're like floating in space, right? It doesn't yeah. really make sense. It's nice that, you know, not only is it ergonomically more comfortable, but you also get the audio right there. And then with the increase in resolution, you know, this is more of a full package. Who do you think the, the headset is for? You know, if you have the HTC Vive, the, the original, yeah. you know, would you upgrade to this? Uh, so I wouldn't see it as something that original Vive owners want to upgrade to, but if you are on the fence of getting VR, I mean, you're definitely going to want to go with the Vive Pro just because of the new features. But at the same time, it's not that big of a jump. I, yeah. would, I would say it's more like a Vive 1.5 than maybe like a Vive 2.0 sure. or something. I would exactly. Say. Mm -hmm. They also like showed off the Intel Y gig, which allows the headset to be wireless. Mm -hmm. You know, we both had a chance to try that playing Arizona Sunshine, a zombie, yep. you know, killing game. You know, what did you think about that? So it's nice to play wireless VR without, you know, a backpack strapped to your head, or regular VR where you have a cord running through the ground. You know, you might trip over. But I think there's a very important compromise that you have to think about: is that the visual quality is very compressed. It's very noticeable right off the bat, and I think that you know it it might be a deal breaker for me. Especially going from the Vive Pro to this uh, de wireless device, it's a very noticeable difference in quality. Yeah. And it's almost hard to make out objects sometimes like that are often distance in VR. Yeah. And this kind of uh, makes that a little bit harder, or actually a lot harder. The thing going into wireless VR I thought about was the latency. That was actually very impressive. You know, when I'm like looking side to side really fast, I didn't feel any difference between mm -hmm. a wired VR headset in terms of like tracking my head motion. So I think that is the most important part with wireless VR, and I think they nailed it there. Right. Now, the visual quality is another story. Like, you definitely notice the compression. I seem to notice it more often in the, in the distance. I don't yes. know if you feel the same. Mm -hmm. And it almost, almost to me felt like you're kind of watching like a 360p video yeah. on YouTube or something. Like, like watching that. old YouTube like, videos. Like old YouTube yeah. videos. But there's a trade-off here. It's like, do you want to go with a wireless but compressed setup, or, or can you just deal with the wire and sharper clarity? And yeah, I agree with you in terms of like the, the response time. That felt really good. And then that, that's sort of a compromise that they had to make between like response time and, and visual clarity. And I think between those two, you have to go with the response time. Yeah. Because otherwise it'll be, be really juddery and you'll get like motion sick. Yeah, that would have been a deal breaker right there. It's important to mention that they're still working on it, so it's not out yet, yes. along with the HTC Vive Pro as well. There's no price or release date yet either. And then the last thing they kind of showed off were the Valve uh, lighthouses, which allow you to use four of them to track a bigger area. But again, if you just want it for like regular room scale at home, it doesn't really affect you too much. You can just go with a two standard uh, lighthouse setup. Um, so yeah, that was uh, our impressions of the HTC Vive. For more CES coverage, head on over to GameSpot.com. Thank you for watching.